हेलो एवरी वन टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द सिलेबस स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट एंटाइटल एज प्रोसेस इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन एंड कंट्रोल पॉपुलरली नोन एज द पी सी आई नो लेट एस सी इन नागपुर यूनिवर्सिटी अमरावती यूनिवर्सिटी एंड पुणे यूनिवर्सिटी देर आर टू सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द कंट्रोल आर इंक्लूडेड इन दीटेक केमिकल इंजीनियरिंग सिलेबस very first is process instrumentation and control or process control and instrumentation and the next is process dynamics and control so let us see over overlook the uh, syllabus of the subject process instrumentation and control in some university it is also called as process control and instrumentation now here you can see i have included first three chapter of the syllabus as you see from the white board very first is chapter number 1 now the chapter number 1 Deals with the dynamic behavior of first order control system. So in this unit, you have to deal with only the first order system. What you have to do? You have to determine the transfer function of the first order system, and then you have to provide some input to the first order system to study how the first order system reacted with respect to time. That is the response of the first order system. So here is the dynamic behavior of the first order control system includes following determination of the transfer function of the following types of the system. Very first is the continuous stir tank heater, mercury thermometer, mixing process, liquid level single tank system, pure capacitive elements. All of these one, two, three, four, five, six to seven systems you have to determine, and you have to prove that these systems are the first order control system. Once you have completed this, later on, by considering this system, you have to provide the input to this system. They are called as the forcing function. so the latter part of this uh, unit included response of the first order system means this first order system how they will be respond when you will give it a input like step impulse ramp and sinusoidal forcing function all of these are the four types of the forcing function which has been included and you have to give to this first order system and study the response equation now this is okay about the unit number 1 what happened in the unit number 2 you have to study the dynamic behavior of the multi capacity control system so very first question is what is the multi capacity control system now multi capacity system is nothing but when one more than one first order systems are arranged in a series then how the system changes its response and how the transfer function changes that you have to study so already you have studied the first order system so multi capacity control system this unit included there are two type of the multi capacity system which you can be arrange very first is the non interacting so in this unit you have to first determine the transfer function of non interacting control system then you have to determine the transfer function of the interacting control system just as well as you have determined for this process after that once you have determined the transfer function of interacting and non interacting control system again you have to provide the state response to non interacting and interacting system step response to the interacting and non interacting systems and then later on you have to do the comparison of interacting and non interacting control system and some new topic is included in this particular chapter that is how you do the linearization in the process dynamics and what is the transportation lag remember both of these terms are very important and that are included in chapter number 2 now talking about the chapter number 3 here we have seen the first order system the first order system arrays in the series now the chapter number Three deals with the dynamic behavior of the second order control system. What is what do you mean by second order control system? I will explain you when we will move forward. Okay, but again you have to determine now the transfer function of the second order system. Means what is the transfer function of the second order system? Here you have to prove that the manometer manometer is the second order control system and the damp oscillator is the second order control system as you have proved for these systems in first order system for first order system. so the manometer determination of transfer function of manometer determination of transfer function of the damp oscillator and once you have determined the transfer function of both this second order system again you have to provide it the state response to the second order system now remember here three types of the second order systems may be um, you got when you provide when the value of the damping coefficient changes that is under damp over damp and critically damp means here the state change is divided into the three part that is under dam over dam and critically dam and later on you have to move to your regular practice such as impulse forcing function to second order system ramp 
forcing function to the second order system and again then sinusoidal forcing function to the second order system and you have to study the response equation accordingly that is y of t later on again some important topic has been considered that is the underdam control system and it includes the characteristics of the underdam control system so this is regarding to the first three minutes and the second three minutes are this now dealing with the chapter number 4 chapter number 5 and chapter number 6 Chapter number four, chapter number five, and chapter number six of RTMNU Nagpur University is slightly different than as compared to the other university because as compared to the Amravati University and Pune University, all these three units are dedicated to the instrumentation only. While in RTMNU, the weightage is this type. Now, in chapter number four, the total emphasis is given on the types of controllers. So, in this unit, you have to study the flapper nozzle pneumatic controller. Its mechanism and working of the flapper nozzle, pneumatic controller, hydraulic controller, working and mechanism of hydraulic controller and electronic controller and determination of transfer function of all these types of the controller. Next, the most important topic of this particular chapter is the function of the different modes of the controllers. Here, the types of controller you have to study this P, PI, PD, PID and you have to study the functions of the different modes of these controllers. Then, the next weightage is given in this unit is for the control wall that is the pneumatic control wall determination of the transfer function of the pneumatic control wall types of the uh, control wall and application of the control wall so this is regarding to the chapter number 4 chapter number 5 is slightly different because the total weightage is given to the microprocessor based digital control system means advanced control system so in this chapter you have to study how the microprocessor based digital control system works what are the hardware elements of this control configuration? Then you have to study the direct digital feedback controller, the type of direct digital feedback controllers and distributed control system that is the DC system. Examples of direct digital feedback control system. These examples of direct digital feedback control system include stir tank heater, heat exchanger, drum boiler, distillation column, jacket head kettle, evaporator and extraction column. Here you have to sketch the diagrams and you have to make the control configuration required for the direct digital feedback control system of a given problem. Now chapter number 6. Chapter number 6 is totally dedicated to the part of the instrumentation as the name of the subject suggests process control and instrumentation. Up till now we are only discussed about the process control and now this 6 unit is dedicated to the part of the instrumentation. So if this chapter is a very detailed uh, chapter in which you have to study the classification of the measurement means the types of measurement then also you have to study the classification of the instrument different types of the instrumentation then classification of the transducers and after that you have to move towards the temperature measurement. Now in the temperature measurement you have to study the various types of the temperature measuring devices such as the thermometers, thermocouples, radiation and optical pyranometers. Then the latter part of this unit includes the pressure measurement. A very detailed study of the pressure measurement is included in this chapter and the types of the pressure measuring instrument is also given. For example ionization gauge, pirani gauge, bell pressure gauge and etc. Then the latter emphasis of this unit is given to the measurement of the level. So the level measurement, the level measuring instrument includes that you have to study includes float and sharp, float and tape, radiation and laser level units and few some other uh, which are not included in this uh, particular slides. So this is regarding to the syllabus of the RTM uh, University which is 50%, 60% same as the subject process control and instrumentation of the Akula University, sorry, uh, Amrauti University and the Pune University. Only the different in these three universities is the weightage given to the part of the instrumentation. In RTM University, more weightage is given to the control and all the part of the instrumentation is included in only a single unit while in other university the section B or the chapter number 5, chapter number, uh, chapter number 4, chapter number 5 and chapter number 6 is given to only the part of the instrumentation. So this is regarding to the introduction to the syllabus of process control and instrumentation of RTMNU Nagpur University.